Apparently, um, uh, Spelling Bee Champion says there's not enough uh, diversity in here, so he wants me to invite Tyler Preston 20 on. Ooh, I know that everyone's uh, their best black Yeah, he's friend. my best friend. Yeah, that was what we yeah. said we do two and a half. <laughs> That's the other one. Doodle, yeah, so our best black friend. Doodle, doodle. His black he's, ass he's, should be on here pretty soon. Sweet. He's got the most catchy fucking theme song. I swear to it God. It is an earworm, dude. It is an earworm. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I mean, I uh, subscribed to him when he had like 2,000 subs or whatever, only because of the song. I couldn't figure yeah. out why he always just stood like in his hallway and like talked about these things, and, but couldn't take like the dirty socks off of his banister. But it didn't <laughs> matter. It didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> because his his theme song was so catchy i'm like you know what i'll watch that and then sing it <laughs> I'd cut. i'm like it's yep. fine it's everyone's friend it's tyler he's your only black friend so he's your best black friend i wouldn't trade him for another black friend because black friends are rare as you should be aware he smiles like richard Pryor, so just sit and stare it's everyone's friend it's tyler it's everyone's friend it's tyler the huffington post has done it yet again do you guys remember the last video I've done where I talked about how social justice warriors are comparing black people to King Kong? Well, guess what? Huffington Post feels the exact same way. Helping me on this video are other black YouTubers who feel the exact same way about this video. What's up, guys? Tyler Preston, I knew you come. Let's get right into it. King Kong is a cinematic icon. Over the course of 85 years, his story has been told in eight different films and countless adaptations. Released in 1933, the original film, King Kong, was a smash hit that spawned an immediate follow-up. The film was known for its thrilling action sequences and never-before-seen special effects. The series then continued with two Japanese-made installments. By the way, those two Japanese films are King Kong vs. Godzilla and King Kong Escapes. King Kong vs. Godzilla was made in 1962, and King Kong Escapes was made in 1966. In other words, the King Kong vs. Godzilla remake in 2020 is a remake of that Japanese film. A 1976 reboot with 1986 sequel, and finally, Peter Jackson's 2005 remake of the original film. Kong returns in 2017 in Kong Skull Island, a reimagining of the original story. I highly recommend that film if you guys haven't checked it out. Historically, King Kong's character has been rooted in a racially charged narrative. Now is it actually rooted in a racially charged narrative, or are you just saying that? Because I get the feeling you might just be saying that. To understand how, it's important to look closely at the storyline. Here's a refresher. A group of men, accompanied by a beautiful woman, traveled to an uncharted island inhabited by savages who worship a giant ape named Kong. The men capture Kong and display him in New York City as the eighth wonder of the world. Driven by love, Kong escapes, takes the beautiful woman, and climbs a tower, only to be shot down by warplanes. You know, your classic Beauty and the Beast tale. It's almost as if the movie is not racist. Oh no, it wasn't the airplanes. Was beauty killed the beast? Not really. Not really. Is it not true that Kong, enthralled by the beauty of the woman, pursued her, which was forbidden because he's a giant gorilla and she's a little tiny woman? Just find racism where you cannot find racism. Find sexism where you cannot find sexism. Just anything is problematic no matter what. Creator Marion C. Cooper crafted a story that illustrated black hysteria and xenophobia. Since I'm not as well informed about the history of King Kong, let's ask Devil's Advocate about the history of King Kong. Alright Tyler, so I thought you were going to give me a challenge, but this one's rather easy to debunk. King Kong is not a racist idea. King Kong is based off of real life animals that existed in the past, and even animals that belong to the cryptozoology type of arena. You see, there's a reason why King Kong existed in Asian films, because Kong himself was most likely based off an Asian concept. Now you may ask where is my proof in that? Well we're gonna 
gonna have to look at the main person responsible for the King Kong movie in 1933. And that is a man known as Marion C. Cooper. If you were to read into his background, you would see that he was actually commissioned to write articles for Asia Magazine. And in doing so, he could have very well have come across certain characters that are featured in Asia. Now, can we think of any mythological characters who could have possibly resembled King Kong? One such character immediately comes to mind. And that is a character that was developed a very long time ago, long before Marion C. Cooper was even born. I would encourage you all to read this little story called Journey to the West. It features one of the most iconic Asian characters of all time and a cornerstone of Asian mythology. That character is known as the Monkey King. One of the Monkey King's signature abilities was to grow in size. And if you were to compare many of the depictions, both in past or present, of the Monkey King once he entered that state, you would notice there are some striking similarities with Sun Wukong or the Monkey King and King Kong. In fact, the Monkey King's last name was Wukong. If you were to take out the W and the U, you have Kong. So to recap, a guy who wrote for Asia Magazine ran across a story of the Monkey King, a character who, depending on the description, was either normal size or the size of King Kong. But if you were to also read deeper into Journey to the West, that would also explain the depictions of the so-called savages that were mentioned in the 1933 King Kong film because the Monkey King was known to hang around other monkeys who were, let's say, more intelligent than the average monkey. In fact, one could just call them savages because in that context, it would literally make sense. Now, I just gave you a perfectly reasonable explanation as to how the King Kong character could have came to be. And that explanation makes perfect sense given the fact that even now, a lot of Asian studios have been using King Kong and King Kong that I totally believe is just a mirror for Sun Wukong or the Monkey King has been emulated even in anime. Take Goku or the Saiyan race from Dragon Ball Z. They had the ability to become giant monkeys when they looked at the moon and those giant monkeys behaved in the same way King Kong would have. And we know those characters, especially Goku, the main protagonist of Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball GT was heavily based off of Sun Wukong, aka the Monkey King. Now, there are other problems with this video. There's a claim here that two points of proving that this whole King Kong character was racist is that the story mentions a bunch of white men and a white woman. Well, newsflash, most white women hang around white men and most white men hang around white women and most white people hang around white people. That does not demonstrate racism. That's called having a preference. Cooper denied this, claiming that he never intended to do so, but the racial parallels exist. So, <laughs> so you acknowledge that Cooper denied this, that Cooper, so you acknowledge that Cooper denied this, that, that he never intended to make these parallels about racism and xenophobia, but your reaction is, but it's there because it's a giant gorilla. Like, I'm convinced if this narrator is white, then that would totally kind of like expose her racist views of black people. While she's sitting here trying to be a progressive ally and kind of sit on the throne of I protect black people, she's literally comparing black people to gorillas. If this is a black person making the narrative, can we just say she has internalized racism? Take another look, this time with key identifiers. Translation, take another look, but first put on these standard issue BLM racism detection glasses. A group of white men. Because a person being white is just definitely the most important thing. Not the character in the movie, just the fact that they're white. A group of white men, accompanied by the quintessential white woman. First of all, how dare you assume their gender and their race? Travel to an uncharted island inhabited by native savages who worship a giant black beast named Kong. <laughs> Whoa, wait, you guys are serious. I just love how you just emphasize on the word beast. It makes you curious what the narrative would have been if his fur was like brown or white or some shit like that. Like what would the narrative be? How, how could they spin this? Because it's pure coincidence, you know, considering the fact that damn near all gorillas fur is black that that they are able to use this. The men capture the beast and bring him to America in chains. 
chains are just definitely symbolic of black people. Never mind the fact that animals, you know, could actually, you know, cause some harm. Oh, no, 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 no. By chaining up animals, we're just chaining up black people. Just, what? It's funny that they say King Kong is a institute of racism and the slave trade. I'm like, if they really wanted to go that far, wouldn't they have the savages actually lead the film crew to actually where Kong is and help the film crew kidnap Kong? Sound familiar? Yeah, it does sound familiar. It sounds like literally every person who owns a big animal talking about the big animal, how they're going to dominate a giant animal because you have to dominate giant animals or they will kill you. Not long after, the beast escapes his captors and steals the woman. She is saved by heroic white men who kill the black beast and reunite her with her intended mate. In other words, white people are just made for white people and black people are just made for black people. How is this any different than any other alt-right arguments? I like how she says it, like those heroic white men saving white women from a giant black beast. <laughs> like, does she realize how this is offensive? Like, you, you, you're, you're comparing black people to a giant ape. And gorillas have black skin. They have black fur and black skin. They are not black people, okay? Only a racist would compare black people to gorillas. Seriously, seriously. The guy who made the movie thought it was awesome to see baboons. Like, that's his inspiration, was a giant ape, was the experiences of Dr. Chilu, who wrote the book that embolstered his own personal, you know, ideas about monkeys and apes. Isn't it simply amazing how black people will get so utterly offended at the very mention of them either resembling or acting like a monkey of any kind, yet they will go out of their way to find some parallel that doesn't exist just so they can say that King Kong is a representation of black people. It just blows my mind. Whether Cooper intended to or not, Kong can be interpreted as an allegory for the American slave trade and interracial relationships. Yes, this can be interpreted as anything depending on who's watching it, but it doesn't automatically make it that thing just because it can be interpreted that way. Did you really just admit that maybe this wasn't Cooper's idea? Maybe Cooper didn't mean to do this. Maybe Cooper didn't have some secret agenda to, to help out the black people. But, but I assure you, this is what Cooper meant. In the latest remake, Kong Skull Island, director Jordan Vote roberts insists his reboot will distance itself from early films while still maintaining the essence of the Kong story. In other words, the new Kong movie is probably going to be racist because of course it is. Oh my god, this whole entire video was just so bad. Uh, Patty, what do you think about the video? This is another instance of people taking movies and, you know, or, or taking old, old timey things and reconstructing them to look exactly the way that they want them to. You said it, sister. Just please, people. Don't compare black people to gorillas. Just, that's just, you know, racist. It's everyone's friend. It's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. What's up, guys? What's up? How you That's doing? Awesome, bud. How you doing? I'm great. Uh, just a little tired, but... Uh... Nice to meet you, finally. Holy fuck, it's not Chris. Oh, yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> In the yeah. Asian. Oh, my God. You must make the kaiju movies yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what? I make, I make the what? Kaiju movies. I have no idea what that is. Kaiju <laughs> Japanese ah, he's, been, he's been living with, really a, with a warski too long, dude. You're becoming a warski, dude. I don't, I don't watch 
much anime at all. Or like I don't know any of the fucking lingo. I don't know any of that shit. Like Godzilla, you know, like the worst Godzilla, Asian ever. Oh, Godzilla. Yeah, Godzilla. Yeah. Godzilla was like the original kaiju. It just means like giant fucking monster. Yeah.